Hey, it's Sean Cooper, the shyness and social anxiety guy. You are not the same person in every social situation, are you? I'm willing to guess that when you're with a group of people who you think are attractive, uh, maybe people who are confident, more outgoing, talkative, around those people, you probably become more shy. You become more quiet. You don't really know what to say. You can't think of anything funny or interesting to talk about. On the other hand, when you're with a different group of people, people who are less popular, less confident, maybe they're kind of shy or quiet like you, they also don't have many friends, they're not that attractive, around these people, you suddenly feel less nervous, you act less awkward, you become more free to express your personality, it becomes much easier to think of funny jokes or interesting things to talk about. Uh, you don't really worry about running out of things to say because you're simply comfortable around these people. So this is one of the first insights which kind of allowed me to overcome my social anxiety, realizing that I interacted differently with different people based on how valuable I saw them to be. So in this situation, when you're with someone who's attractive, confident, popular, maybe in that situation, you think they're very valuable. You kind of feel inferior to them, which makes you unable to also be confident. Meanwhile, other people who you don't see as very valuable, their opinion of you doesn't really matter to you. So you're, you're kind of, you don't care, right? It makes it easy to be confident. Um, Back when I had really bad social anxiety, if I was walking down the street, like outside on the sidewalk, um, I found that if I walked past someone who was like an old person, like an old lady or an old man, if I walked past them, I actually wouldn't feel that nervous. But I found that when I walked past someone who was my own age, or especially a girl who I found attractive, that was a situation where my social anxiety would flare up. I would start to feel my heart beating fast. I would start to sweat just walking past uh, someone, like a girl I found attractive on the street. So what I realized is that I need to figure out why I act differently depending on the people I'm with. And if I could act as confident, as talkative around these you know, popular, attractive people, as I did around the not popular, not that attractive people, it would improve my social life a lot. Because right now what you're doing is you are basically pushing those people away. When there's some girl or guy who you find attractive and you shut down, you become quiet, you start to act awkward, you don't know what to say, you, that's, that's a block you have inside you. You're making it hard for yourself to have friends who are confident, to have friends who are social, to, to have a girlfriend or boyfriend who's attractive. You're pushing them away when you feel this inferiority. So I made it one of my goals to kind of figure out why I acted differently in different situations, why I valued certain people which caused me to act differently like this, and how to overcome it. And in this video, I'm going to just share with you three uh, ways or three quick tips that can get you started in not being awkward or feeling nervous around those people who are more attractive, confident, popular, extrovert, you know, whatever people you tend to feel nervous or awkward around. Okay, so tip number one, the first way to uh, kind of get over this inferiority is to look for examples of people who are similar or worse off than you, uh, g getting what you want to have. So why did you decide to watch this video? Is it because you want to be more confident in social situations? Is it because you maybe want to have more friends or increase your social life? Is it because you want to improve your dating life or get a girlfriend or boyfriend? Whatever it is that you want, confidence, friends, romance, take a look around you and try to find examples of people who are similar to you, whatever that means, similar height, similar appearance, uh, similar level of attractiveness, who have what you want to have. 
one of the main ways that you might be making yourself feel inferior to other people is by thinking that you have something wrong with your physical appearance that stops you from being confident, from having friends, from getting, getting a girlfriend or boyfriend. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you actually probably look average. You're probably an average looking person. Um, if you walk down the street here, that's what you see. Average looking people. But if you're someone who struggles with insecurities, you'll tend to focus on just maybe the top five or 10% most attractive people and think I will never look like that person. Well, you don't have to. Most people don't. Most people look pretty much average. And even people who look below average, they are able to be confident. You'll find plenty of people who look below average or even ugly, who have a big group of friends, who have a girlfriend or boyfriend. And in fact, um, on this video, I'll post up a picture of a couple of motivational speakers who I've watched before. One is a guy with no arms and no legs. Uh, you know, it's like a huge physical defect who is able to be a very confident and charismatic, motivational uh, Christian speaker. He has a wife and kid now. So I'll post a picture of him here. And uh, the second guy um, is another speaker. You know, that's why I know about them because they put their face out there, their speakers. He's a guy who has uh, a different type of a physical deformity. His name is Sean Stevenson. And uh, he's also able to be a very confident, charismatic, uh, motivational speaker. And he has friends. And he's even been a dating coach before, which means that even though he does look this way, he is able to get dating success because the big thing that might be driving people away from you if you have trouble getting friends or you have trouble finding someone romantically, it might not be how you look. It might simply be the fact that you are insecure, you have this sad, depressed, negative energy in you, and that's kind of seeping out of you to anyone you talk to. So it's not your insecurity itself that uh, might be turning people off. It's your feeling of insecurity, which might be making people uh, not attracted to you, whether that's friendships, romantic relationships, or whatever it is. So I guarantee if you look, you'll find examples of people who aren't that attractive, who have what you want. And the reason why it's important to look for these examples is because it'll give you permission to be confident, to uh, socialize more, to maybe go talk to someone you find attractive without thinking they'll never like you, without sabotaging yourself. I mean, if you take a look around you, even very overweight people, not that attractive people, can often be very confident. Even homeless people, they have friends. They have friends. Um, even people who aren't that physically attractive are able to find girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, and husbands. And keep your eye out for these examples. Now, the second tip or the second way to stop feeling awkward or nervous around uh, you know, this group of people who you feel inferior to is to raise your perception of your own value. This makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, if you feel inferior to these people and that's why you can't be confident but around these other people who you don't feel inferior to and you're able to be confident and talk to them doesn't it make sense that if you raised how valuable you think you are you would then be able to socialize or not be awkward or nervous around these more attractive and confident talkative people now there's a lot of ways that people try to raise their uh, view of their own value which aren't very healthy one way is simply by trying to run a rat race where you're always trying to improve your physical appearance just to feel good about yourself. So if you're overweight, if you don't have good style, it, it can make sense to work on improving that. If uh, you don't take care of your appearance, if you don't take care of your body, that, that is going to play a role in making you less attractive to other people. I mean, this is common sense. But on the other hand, if you're too focused on trying to, you know, reach some ideal of perfection, having like a perfect body or having, uh, you know, the most expensive designer clothing or maybe reaching some super high financial success or being perfect 
in your academics, right? Being like a perfect student, uh, just to feel good about yourself enough to talk to people. That's very psychologically unhealthy. And that's something that a lot of uh, people try to do. They're stuck in this race of trying to live up to other people's standards. If I can just improve myself so that everyone likes me, you know, people look at me and they like what they see, uh, you know, they're impressed by my accomplishments, then I can feel confident, then I have value, then I can, you know, uh, not feel inferior to other people. See, the reason why you don't feel maybe confident around these people in the first place is you're, you're already too uh, anxious to try to please other people with what you say, how you act, the way you dress. And you're nervous to avoid disapproval by staying quiet, by not saying much, by not trying to stick out. So uh, the solution to this is not to play the game better, you know, become better at achieving people's approval. The solution is to get out of that game altogether, determine your own standards, your own values, and live up to those. If you enjoy educating yourself and reading books, or you do enjoy improving your health, you can work on that. And as long as you're making yourself a better person day by day, by your own standards, uh, I'd say that that should allow you to feel good about yourself. Another benefit of determining your own standards, picking how you want to live and then going by that instead of trying to, you know, guess what other people like and live up to that image. Another benefit of that is you become more sure of yourself. You, you start to place your opinions over the opinions of other people, which is ultimately how you overcome shyness or social anxiety. What is awkwardness? Awkwardness is really being unsure of yourself. Uh, when someone is awkward, it's not what they did, it's how they did it. It's usually because they said something while they were unsure of themselves. Maybe they reached out to grab something, but they did it in an unsure way, which is what makes the action awkward. So once you start to develop your own standards and values in life, uh, because you're relying on yourself for what the right thing is to say, for what the right way is to live, it makes you more sure of yourself. See, all these people who you see being social or outgoing or confident, it's not like they can read everyone's minds and guess what the right thing to say is. They're just sure in whatever they say. They, they find one thing interesting, they find one thing funny to say, and then they say it and they are sure of themselves. And I'm repeating this just to stress the point. Now the third tip or way to overcome this awkwardness or nervous, nervousness around uh, people is to decrease the importance of any individual or group's opinion of you. So the way that our psychology evolved is in small tribes where if you made a bad impression on one person or one group, well, that's you're stuck with them for your whole life because you're living in a jungle where there's only 50 people in your tribe and now everyone knows you as being this person. So in our evolutionary history, making a good impression was very important. But now, uh, pretty much everyone is living in cities with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of people who you could go out, meet, connect with. And because we live in such a place of abundance, of so many uh, groups, so many social circles, so many uh, friends that you could possibly have, so many uh, people who you could date to find your ideal girlfriend or boyfriend, it doesn't make sense anymore to place so much importance on one person or one group's opinion of you. A lot of people think confidence means uh, thinking that people will like me. That's not what confidence means. Confidence is thinking I'll be okay whether these people like me or not. So it's not about turning yourself into a person who's always accepted by everyone. It's realizing that you're gonna be fine even if this person or this group doesn't accept you. All right, so number one was find examples of people who are similar or worse off than you having what you want. This will give you permission to be less awkward, more confident. It'll 
uh, start to chip away at those feelings of inferiority. Number two is to raise your perception of your own value, not by running a race trying to appear more acceptable by other people's standards, but by uh, starting to think about what your standards and your values in life are and living up to that. That's what's going to allow you to become more sure of yourself, which is going to start to also erase awkwardness. And number three was decrease the importance of any individual or group's opinion of you. Uh, whenever you start to feel yourself getting awkward or nervous, think that this isn't your one opportunity. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good tips out of it. And if you want to learn more from me, uh, head on over to shynesssocialanxiety.com where I post uh, my free tips and articles. This is Sean Cooper, the Shyness and Social Anxiety Guy, and I'll talk to you again soon.